Uh, I think you pump me up a lot. Uh, it's going to be hard to try to come behind that introduction. But I first want to give uh, glory and honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to give honor to all of the auxiliaries, the leaders of the church, all of the deacons and minister. If you would, please stand so that we can acknowledge you. Amen. Amen. Your leadership has been covered that you can still run this with all of the uh, diligence that you serve and still run even with the absence of a pastor. Amen. 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 I want to give honor Amen. to my father and my mother and my grandmother and my two Amen. sisters who snuck out of church to come see me. Oh. <laughs> so, right. no plan to be before you long. I have a unique message. It's not particularly for the elderly or the youth that I gave me something right in between. Because uh, I had something already and you wouldn't change what I was going to present. Uh, so, press to your blessed feet and turn in your Bibles to the book of Esther, oh, chapter 4. Yes, that's the book. If you have it, please rest to your blessed feet. We stand in reverence to God's word because it's living, it's alive, it's quick. We stand for any other officials who can be standing for the high priest, the Amen. Lord. Amen. 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 Esther chapter 4, we have it say, I'm in the word. I'm in the word. And we're going to read from verses 10 down to verse 3 of chapter 5. Amen. Amen. So bear with me. Uh, and again, Esther spake unto the tent and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's providences do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king to the inner courts who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. That's the dilemma right there. And told to Mordecai Esther's words, then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shalt there enlarge and in deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and whosoever knoweth whether thou art come to thy the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther bade them, return for the God to answer, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my neighbors will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And uh, the king sat upon the royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held on to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand, so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given, even given thee to half of the kingdom. You may be seated. Amen. Um, look at your neighbor and with all the demonstrative bullying that you can muster up. Tell them my subject for today, the break of silence. Break of silence. Uh, look at your other neighbor and say, can you trust God when he is not speaking? Can trust God when he is not speaking? And can we look at just one other person and just say, God is up to something. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity that you trusted me, God, with this assignment to come speak to your people and to impart into them. God, I'm asking, God, that you remove me out of the way, God, and that you stand before your people. Use me as your puppet, Father. Allow me, God, to be the caveat for which, God, the word is delivered to them, Father. I ask, God, that they be attentive, God, to the ear, Father, so they may hear the word that will be convicted, God. And they get confirmation and declaration, Father, and affirmation that they need it, Lord. And they pray for this word, Lord. And so I ask God at the end of my assignment, God, that someone will ask the question, what must they do to be saved? And we can serve them the answer, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank God. And all the blessed people say amen. Amen. Uh, psychology has a very intriguing fact that suggests that communication is not centered on lucid vernacular or eloquent word, but is mostly articulated on non-verbalization. And they emphatically and concisely say that 93% of the information being registered or recorded in a person's mind during any given encounter with another is being picked up without either of them saying a word. Right. Uh, that 55% of the 93 is formulated by your body language alone. And the other 38 is made up by your tone of voice. So without me even actually saying anything, you can tell what I am thinking and what I am feeling just by my body posture or the sound or tone of my voice. Okay. It's an interesting fact because through those streams of communication, it creates recognition. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, that you begin to catch on to people's idiosyncrasies and their peculiarities, such as hand gestures and micro expressions and fixations. You begin to identify people by that because it creates recognizable patterns. Uh, and everyone has unique patterns that are unique to themselves. For example, I can be in the kitchen of my house and not see who actually walked in. And without them saying anything, I could tell who walked in. Because subconsciously, I took in the information. And so by those patterns, I picked up on to their identity. And so if you allow me to digress momentarily from this point to give light to another. I was reading the book of Esther, and as I was reading it, I noticed that God is not mentioned at all. There is no mention of his name. I, I can deal with that. So I said, oh, maybe, maybe his voice will be recorded in some type of prophet, but there is no identity of a prophet ever coming up to Esther or Mordecai declaring God's word. So I crossed that off from my list, and I said, okay, maybe he's going to give him a vision or a dream. And there is no reference of open visions or dreams in the text. And I began to get nervous until I read this commentary by some theologians. And they believe the reason for this is because Mordecai is most likely the author of the book of Esther. And when he was writing it, he was being context sensitive to make sure that he did not offend the king of that age. And although he did not mention God at all, it has become obvious that he is in the text because there are certain patterns that give way to his identity. And so there is another interesting philosophy that derives from Eastern Orthodox theologians, where they make uh, uh, a distinction between the ousia, or the essence of God, versus the energia, or energy of God. Mm -hmm. And stay with me, I'm taking you somewhere whether you know it or not. Uh, uh, the ousia, or the essence of God, refers to God as he is. It refers to his nature, or his substance. And the energy or the energy is the activities of God actualized in the earth. Come on now. Simply put, the energies of God is how God chooses to reveal himself to you. It is the creative, the tangible, or the perceptual part of God that he manifests himself. 
himself to you. Uh, but the Uziah or the essence of God is different. It is the uncreated, the origin of God. It is the part of God that lives outside of your consciousness and unconsciousness, beyond your sexual perception and beyond your intellectualism. Because you did not see God at any time. You did not touch God at any time. It is the part of God that, 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 that is the uncreated, the substance of God, and that substance does not change. For this is why God makes statements such as this, I am that I am, or I am the Lord, I change not that. Because the essence or the substance or the person of God does not change. It is, it is, uh, 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 it is continual. But although God's essence does not change, he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His energies, however, uh, it, it is revealed in scriptures all over the pages for when he reveals himself in anthropomorphic terms, which is really just a fancy way for how God personified himself for man's understanding, such as when he said, I am the lily in the valley. It is not that God is a flower, but it is so that the gardener can understand who God is to him, or that he is a chief cornerstone who the parents have rejected so that the architect can understand who Or how God shows up in Theopolis, or when he shows up in human form in the Old yeah, Testament, yeah, yeah, yeah. like when he showed up to Abraham as Melchizedek, or when he walked up on Joshua, and he said, all you for was all you against us. It was those Theopolis where he had revealed his activities in the world. Or you can just look at how he reveals his various names unto us as Yahweh and Jehovah, and Jehovah Nisi, and Jehovah Sikhani, or Alpha and Omega. Yeah. And so, as I said to you before, God is never mentioned in the book of Esther at all. But though uh, 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 God is not mentioned in the book of Esther, does not give us an uh, uh, obvious reference or his, his essence is not obviously subjected to in the text, there is a surety of his energies casting a shadow over the story. Because if you pay attention to what he is doing, you can see that he had his hand on her life since. There you go. Uh, uh, because if you look at it very literally and exegetically, you can see that God is moving throughout of her life. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are y'all with me? Huh? Yes. Okay. All right, okay. And so he is moving in her life. And he has had his hand on her since the beginning. And so this is why you cannot allow your circumstances to cause you to misinterpret who God is and where he is. You cannot try to determine who God is based on what you see. Because you will always miss him. See, God is not recognized by your circumstances or your condition. He's always revealed. Yeah, 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 yeah. You begin to gain revelation of God if you take a moment just to look back over your life in the moments where you was praying to God and you did not hear his voice and you did not have full understanding of his plans, but he still made a way out of nowhere. He still brought you through. He still brought you out. And then you begin to understand that God was present by the things that he put in. Order. This is why the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It did not say that he will inform the man so that he can put things into order. God does not have to give you a directive in order for your life to have direction. Oh, God, hear me. God does not have to open his mouth towards you in order for your life to have order. For who you to be preacher, I will. When God decided to make a woman, he did not walk up to Adam and ask him, was it okay with him? He did not inform him through vision or, or, or a dream. He did not talk to him through supernatural osmosis. No, God just sat back in heaven and watched Adam work. And he said to himself, within himself, it is not good that man should be alone. And so he put him to sleep, opened him up, took one of his 24 ribs, closed him back up, and woke him up and brought him the woman. And when Adam awoke and seen her, he had revelation of what God's plan was. Yes, 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 yes. 
yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so God does not have to notify you in order to move into your life. Uh, he doesn't have to get you okay. All he has to do I is determine it, right. and it is so. All he has to do is determine that you're blessed, and it is so. All he has to do is determine that you're prosperous, and it is so. All he has to do is determine that you're healed, and it is so. All he has to do is determine that you're a victor, and it is so. No. Right. Okay. There's no difference. Slice the bread. <laughs> in the life of that now you must understand who Esther is. Esther did not come from a lineage of any uh, aristocratic background. Come on. Uh, she's not flowing with opulence. She is an orphan. Both of her parents are dead, and for what we know, she doesn't have, have any siblings. Come on. Esther is not even the first character introduced in the book that is now after her. She is a nobody in scripture. Yeah. Nobody knows who this female is. And yet, God's hand hey. is on her. Right. Thanks be to God that my past is not determined my future. That God will pull me from obscurity to notoriety. Thank God that me ra being raised in the ghetto does not determine my future. Thanks be to God that I was an orphan does not determine my future. Thanks be to God that they talked about me did not determine my future. My past does not determine where my life is headed. All right. All right. All right. All right. And so, that's just me had a gruesome history as well of captivity because of the sins of the kings of Judah and Israel. Yeah. And so he was taken captive under the Babylonian rule of Nebuchadnezzar. And after a couple of years, they was overtaken by the Persian dynasty. Yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the text begins by talking about the emperor Xerxes and his dispute with his wife Vashti. Yes. Now, Xerxes is an extremely rich man. He's a man of power. He, he rules over 127 provinces that stretch all the way from Asia down to mid-Africa. Yeah. Uh, he's a man of power. And they perceived him as a demigod, if that makes anything worse. And so he was having a party and he wanted to present his wife to his boys because she was considered to be his prize. But she said, hey, I'm not happy. And so she refused to come in. Uh -huh. And by her refusal, it created her removal. And so they went on a diligent search trying to find a suitable version for a replacement of the queen. And after they searched and searched and searched for about two years, they found this Jewish unknown girl who was beautiful, but most importantly had favor on her life. It is vital that you understand that it is not your property that gets you favor. It is the arrangement and planning of God on your life that gets you favor. Someone look up to heaven and say, God, give me favor. So God is up to something. That's his life, man. And her favor moved this insignificant, unknown woman up past the upper echelons, up past the aristocrats, up past those that should have, could have, and would have had a better chance than her to become queen if Esther did not have favor on her life. Because favor will give you the advantage in adverse situations. She didn't even have to do anything. All she had to do was walk in the room. Someone looked up to heaven again and said, God, give me favor. Amen. And so, after a two-year long process, they finally made Esther the queen. Why is it a long process? Because there was always a process to your promotion. Yeah. 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 Mordecai, her older cousin, who was perceived as a, a father figure who took her in as his own, had a tendency of hanging in Shushan outside the gate of the kingdom to check on her status. And while he was out there, he overheard some discussions by the king's officials that he was planning on assassinating the king. And he told Esther, and she revealed that information to the king, and they had them killed, and they replaced them with Haman. Now, Haman, in my opinion, is equivalent to the spawn of Satan. Yeah. He is the enemy of the Jews. He is a uh, power hungry somebody. He is arrogant and he is narcissistic. And the reason I call him the spawn of Satan is because he wanted to emulate the demigod. He wanted to be like the Most High. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he made an arrangement that when he walked past that you would bow in his presence. But when he came past Mordecai, Mordecai refused to bow because he said, I am not going to compromise my faith because you may be a threat. And real faith knows how to stand firm in the presence of got offended by this simple Hebrew Jewish man. And so he made a plan to plot out against the Jews to have them exterminated. And he went to the king and got him to comply by sending it with his reign. And he sent out the letters throughout all of the 127 providences. And it says that he sat down and drank while Israel went up and wept. Some people just find joy. And your pain. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. And it says that Mordecai perceived what had happened. And he stripped himself. And he put the sackcloth on his head. And the ashes upon his face. And he started walking throughout the streets, weeping bitterly. Uh, looking for God's voice and God did not answer. Come on. What do you do when you get in a desperate moment and you're looking for God and He does not answer you? Oh my God, God they, they said they found a lump on my breast. I need you to do something right now in this silence. Oh God, they said I might have AIDS. Oh God, this is silence. God, my mom was on the deathbed right now. I need you to do something in this silence. What do you do when God does not speak in the moment where you desperately Oh, any of you ever been there before? Oh, and so Mordecai is walking around weeping bitterly in the text. And so this is such a rapid change because everything was going so well. Esther had just became queen, and there was peace in the kingdom. And all of this transpired because Mordecai refused to bow. Oh, what do you do when your life has a drastic change? All because you decided to serve God. See, I didn't understand if my life going, was going down if I was being disobedient, but he's being obedient. Yeah. And yet his life is going down, yeah. down, down. What do you do when you, your faith gets you more problems than promises? Hello, hello. Mm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Esther heard about what was going on. And she began to weep herself. Not that long because she was kind of protected by her status. Yeah. See, oftentimes we think that our status exempts us from life itself. Yeah. Oh, but let me let you know that you could be a CEO and still have to get an MRI. Uh -huh. You could be a pastor and your house still just be possessed. You could be the choir director and your family yeah. still fall apart. Yeah. I don't care who you are and what you are, you could be a millionaire and still be depressed. and her chamberlains unto Mordecai to check upon him. Now, they send him raiment so that he can cover himself, but he refuses to put it on. Now, and so after he refused, she sent her personal messenger, attack unto him to go see what is going on. And he returns a message unto Esther asking for her help because she's the only person in position to do something about what is transpiring. Yeah. Oftentimes, God will promote you into position so that you will bring about a change. That he will promote you at your job so that you will bring about a change. That's the reason why he hired you so that you can bring about a change. The reason why you went into the new neighborhood is so you can bring about a change. That God promotes you so that you can bring a change. And this staggered conversation between the two gave Esther time to contemplate on what she was going to respond to Mordecai. And so she began to think on the adversity and, and, and the, the uh, antagonistic circumstances against her. And the more she thought on it, 
the more she discredited herself and removed herself from the situation. Because you will always adopt the message that you continue to repeat to yourself. Like, oh, I ain't nothing but a loser. Oh, I ain't nothing but a scholar. And so you keep on repeating those messages to yourself. You're going to take on its identity. And so, your faith starts to shrink when you start repeating those messages to yourself. Because your focus is on it. And whatever has your focus has your faith. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Esther is thinking to herself, this is not going to work. She is rationalizing the situation. She has not seen the king for 30 days. And that is her husband. And if that was not bad enough, he had a decree that did not discriminate about who you was, male or female. If you walked in unto the king without uh, being announced, he had the right to kill you unless he lifted up his golden scepter towards you. And that was very unlikely because he did not have a habit of grace. And so, she sends her excuses to Mordecai. And his response was always something encouraging. Uh, trying to summon her help. And this conversation is very bizarre because Mordecai was just crying a couple moments ago. And now he's turning around and he's beginning to encourage Esther. I'm trying to figure out how in the world is he ministering to her in the midst of this stressful time. In a stress situation. This is a pressure time. There's a hair on the Jews, and yet he stands there uh -huh. and begins to encourage her under pressure. Yes. Because you don't know what's in you uh -huh. until okay. you are placed hey. under pressure. Uh, yeah, the contents that are within you starts to come out of you when your life is placed under pressure. You thought that the burden was placed on your life to take you out, but God placed it there to pull what He placed in you. Out of you. God is up to that to stand. And so, Mordecai makes a drastic transition in the way he is responding. There is no change in the situation, there's no change in his circumstance, yet there is a change in his reaction. And I don't know for what. Is there a change in his reaction? Because Mordecai did something. He stopped letting the external situation get into him. And he allowed what was in him to start getting into the situation. Uh, he changed the overall message that was coming in uh, and started repeating something to himself. He says that I had too much experience with God to let this thing defeat me. Because when you have experience with God, uh, you have encouragement through God. All you have to do is look back over your life of the things that God has done for you and you begin to see that God will be here. He will be my help. He is a present help. And so you will get encouraged by the experience that you have with God. Do I have five moments that this is five or not? And so, Mordecai did what Romans Chapter 10, 17 said, it says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, in the Greek, it does not have the same uh, meaning as it does in the English. The English it is written in the present progressive participle, which means that it is a present actually happening continually. But in the Greek, it is, it is talking about a reoccurrence of something that you heard in your past. Uh, yeah. uh, it's uh, something that is the basis of what you read, uh, what you heard being preached to you, what you heard on the radio, what you heard in a song, and you begin to continue the message to yourself until it begins to activate some faith down in you. God does not have to be speaking in order for you to have an activation of faith. All you have to do is pull back what God has spoken to you before and repeat it to yourself over and over again until you have some faith activated in you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like the woman with the issue of love. When she came pressing through the crowd, oh, she gave a repeat something hey. to herself over and over again until it became her reality. If I could just 
just touch the hem of his garment. I know I can be made whole. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I can be made whole. And she said until it became her reality. Until Jesus said, Who touched me? And he said, Woman, thou art whole. Come on now. All right, all right. Woman uh, said, I read too much in the Torah about my fathers and how they came out of Egypt. How they were victims for me to allow this thing to take me out. God doesn't have to give you a new word for you right. to have a new promise. That's All you have to do is take oh, what you already said and repeat it to himself. It is so. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. When something is up against you, all you have to do is say, I am more than a I already try to say that you are sick. You say, I am healed by this structure. into a spiritual consecration. Uh, because you always know where your trust is for where you remove your hands from and place them towards. As long as your life is stable, you don't need any support. But when your life starts shaking, whenever you remove your hands from and grab to shows where you trust. So you start reaching for your husband and you start reaching for your kids and you start reaching for your job and your whole turn on God's word. And so after three days of fasting, she put on her royal apparel, preparing us for where she plans on going. Because your preparation reveals where you expect to go. And she's about to go to the presence of royalty. And then she begins to walk towards the house. With every step, she feels the pressure. Come on. And she feels the fear. Yeah. And she feels the threat on her life. And she's saying to herself, uh, my experience says that God is able. I know that's His right. word says that's that right. he is willing. Yeah. And what I'm seeing right now says that he is absent. But she continues on moving anyway. Feeling the fear and moving towards it anyway. Because she understands that faith is not the absence of fear. It is the, it is the progression beyond it. And she goes to the king. All right. All right. That's all right. And it says, she walked in. And you saw this tension in the room, this silence. She waited for him. What are you going to do? All you can hear is a heart pump. 
And I got her her home, she wants to live in the air. But she's waiting on his reaction. And it says that when he saw her, she obtained the favor. Yeah. All right. And it's yes. I know that. Ah, because of what she did in her past. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because what you do privately manifests publicly. Yeah. Uh, what you do privately manifests publicly. Yeah. And when she got to the face of God, there was a change when he saw something about this one. It's different. And it's as if we saw her. She obtained favor in this sight. And I wonder why they talked about his vision twice. I understand that they're making a reference to something, but it's very peculiar for the reason why he said it. Mordecai is being very careful when he is writing this. He is not trying to suggest that she, he took a double take at Esther, but it says that there was something deeper than his physical sight. There was a change in his perception yeah. of her. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said, when he saw her, she obtained Come on. A perception in his sight. And when he raised the gold. Oh,